In this video, you'll learn how to calculate horizontally launched projectile motion problems. Question 1. A baseball player stands on the edge of a 20 meter high cliff. The baseball, the player throws the baseball horizontally with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. How far does the baseball travel horizontally before hitting the ground? So I'm going to start with a sketch. My first step is going to start with the sketch. And I've got this ball um, that I am throwing towards the right and it tells me that the uh, velocity is 15 meters per second so I will write that so VX equals 15 meters per second and it also says that the um, the cliff is 20 meters so from the bottom here to the top is 20 meters they want to know how far so this ball is going to fall like this and I am looking for the displacement, the delta x. So the first step is to draw a sketch. The second step will be to indicate the positive direction and I will do that here. So I'm indicate the positive direction. I'm going to make right positive and I will make up positive. Now this is arbitrary. I could have made down positive um, or up positive. I could have made left positive. Um, it is arbitrary, but you try to um, do it to your advantage. Um, sometimes we will try to do it to minimize our negative numbers, um, but it is arbitrary. As long as you're consistent with it, um, that is fine. Uh, so we did uh, step number one, sketched. Uh, we did step number two, indicate positive direction. And now we're going to fill in the variables chart. Vertically, we know that the object um, went vertically went down, um, went down 20 meters. Because up is positive, my vertical here will be 20, um, negative 20 meters. The acceleration we know is always constant, and in the vertical direction, it's down. Uh, so I'm going to write negative 10 meters per second squared. I'm using the approximate number. You could use 9.8. I'm going to go ahead and use negative 10 here to make it easier to calculate. We also know that the horizontal velocity is 15 meters per second. Um, so horizontal, I'm going to write 15 meters per second. I'm going to write here 15 meters per second. These will always be the same. These two are always going to be the same because horizontally, it's moving at constant velocity. And then horizontally, the acceleration is zero because it's moving at constant um, velocity. Also important to remember is that the time on the horizontal and the time on the vertical is going to be the same um, because uh, the final um, the velocity vertically will occur at the same time as the final horizontal um, uh, for the final horizontal velocity. So there's going to be a, those are going to be equal. That is the only number that will um, always be equal for the vertical and the uh, horizontal. Okay, now so we did uh, we filled in the variables chart. The next uh, step is to select the equation to find the time. So now we're going to, uh, we'll, in this situation, we're going to use our kinematics chart. You can watch that video where I show you how to figure out um, which equation to use. And oh, one more, the initial vertical velocity is zero. So we're going to look for an equation um, that has displacement, initial velocity, acceleration, time. So it, the only thing it doesn't have is final velocity, and we don't really care about that. So that equation is going to be delta y equals vit plus 1 over 2 at squared. And because the initial velocity vertically is 0, uh, we just get delta y equals 1 over 2 at squared. Now we're going to go ahead and substitute um, negative 20 equals 1 half. The acceleration is negative 10 t squared. The negatives will cancel out. I'm going to end up with 20 equals 5 t squared. 4 equals t squared, so t is equal to 2, 2 seconds. I'm going to go and bracket that because I'm going to use that number. Let me go ahead and fill that in here. So 2 seconds and 2 seconds, all right? And then um, using that, I'm going to then shift my focus to the horizontal motion because I'm looking at how far. I'm looking at how far um, uh, it travels horizontally. So uh, when we're dealing with the horizontal motion, we're using our constant velocity equation, delta x equals vxt. And our horizontal velocity is 15 meters per second. 
doesn't matter if you're using the um, initial or the final, it's going to be the same because constant, it's horizontal, it's moving at constant velocity. The time is two seconds, and so our horizontal displacement is 30 meters. So it travels 30 meters. It travels 30 meters. Um, here's our, our, our question mark that we're looking for. Tra travels 30 meters uh, horizontally. Now, let's take a look at the second question. Um, what is the final velocity of the baseball just before it hits the ground? So, just before it hits the ground, it's going to have not only a horizontal velocity, but also a vertical velocity. And these are vectors, so we can't just add these two numbers together. We have to use Pythagorean theorem. Um, let me go ahead and um, label this chart here um, of what we all right, what we know from the question. We know that horizontally the velocity is 15 meters per second, and this doesn't change because uh, there is no horizontal force. So the ver the the motion horizontally is going to have a constant velocity. Vertically. Uh, we have a acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, or 10 meters per second every second, which means that after one second, it's 10 meters per second, after two seconds, 20 meters per second, so forth. Uh, to find uh, the speed at at the right before it hits the ground, we're going to need to use the time um, times the acceleration. Now, why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at uh, one of our kinematic equations. V final equals V initial plus AT. And I'm going to analyze this vertically. So we're looking at the vertical. This we're looking at the vertical motion right here. Vertical. Okay. And so vertically, initially, it's going to be 0 plus. And A is going to be 10. In this case, a negative 10 because I made a positive times the time, 2 seconds. So right before it hits the ground, the vertical velocity is going to be negative 20 meters per second. I'm going to go ahead and bracket that because I'm going to use that again. And I'm going to put that number right here, 20 meters per second. I'm not going to put that negative again because I already know I have an arrow right there indicated that it's down. Right? That All that negative is saying is that the velocity is in the downward direction. Okay. So the second part of the question is to find the final velocity um, before it hits the ground. Right? So what is the Final, final velocity, velocity. Okay, so not just the horizontal, not just the vertical, but the actual, um, the the total, the, the actual speed when it hits the ground. Okay, so now um, I'm going to draw my rectangle, and uh, we're we're using the uh, tip to tail method here to add vectors. Tail tail to uh, tip method looks like this. So I'm going to have my uh, 15 meters per second. And then I'm going to take my vertical um, vector, 20 meters per second, and the tip to tail method. So I add them tip to tail, and then I start from I draw an arrow from where I started to where I ended, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that um, that vector here, that diagonal vector right there. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use um, Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, we have 15 squared plus 20 squared equals c squared. 15 squared plus 20 squared is 625 equals c squared. Square root 625, we get 25 meters per second. And that is our answer. So what is our final speed right before it hits the ground? Uh, it is going to be 25 meters per second. Okay, so here's another problem. Um, you may want to pause and give this, give this a try, and then check your answers afterwards. An archer stands on level ground and shoots an arrow horizontally with a velocity of 25 meters per second. The arrow travels 16 meters horizontally. What was the initial launch height? So I've included our steps on the right here. So we're going to um, use that to guide us. So the first is to sketch the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch the picture. I'm going to include some of the information they provide, some of the numbers that they provide, such as the uh, horizontal velocity, the Vx, is 25 meters per second. We also knows that, know that it traveled 16 meters horizontally. We are looking for 
the vertical displacement. How far did it, uh, what was the launch height? Uh, and the second step is we're going to indicate the positive direction. So the positive direction, um, I'm going to, this time I'm going to make right positive and down positive just so that you can see that you can do it either way as long as you're consistent. All right, in the next step, um, we're going to fill out the variables chart. Um, so we're going to do this for the horizontal as well as for the vertical. Um, so what do we know? We know that it was launched with a speed of 25 meters per second. So I'm going to put 25 meters per second, 25 meters per second. Remember, these two numbers are always going to be the same because horizontally it's moving at constant velocity. Uh, vertically, we know that initial velocity is zero because it was launched horizontally. If it was launched at an angle, it would have an initial, initial vertical velocity. But in this case, it's being launched horizontally, so there's no initial um, vertical velocity. We also know that acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, and it's down. We made down positive, so that's going to be a positive number. Uh, we also uh, know that the horizontal distance that traveled was 16 meters. We also know horizontally the acceleration is zero. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the launch height. So I'm going to put a question mark right there. Uh, so now, um, also the time is equal. So now that we've filled out the um, variables chart, let's, let's uh, next move on to the equation. So now we're going to um, need to calculate um, for the time. We're going to select an equation, calculate from the time. Now, when I look here, I can see that I have enough information to calculate time from the horizontal motion. So that's what I'm going to start off with. Horizontally, it's moving at constant velocity. So delta x equals vt. And so uh, I know that the horizontal um, displacement is 16 equals, uh, and then the horizontal velocity is 25 uh, times t. And uh, 16 divided by 25 t, I get 0.64 seconds. I'm going to go and bracket that. Because I'm going to use that number again, I'll go ahead and put that number into my chart as well, 0.64 seconds. So now I have uh, the time. I know the initial velocity vertically. I know the acceleration vertically. Um, I can use my kinematic equation, delta y equals vit plus 1 over 2 at squared. Um, I know that the initial velocity is 0, uh, so then uh, delta y is what I am looking for equals 1 over 2. The acceleration is 10. It's positive because down is positive. And the t is 0.64 seconds squared. And if I calculate um, half times 10 times 0.64 squared, delta y, I get 2 meters. And that's my answer for part a. The initial height is 2 meters. Next question, what was the final speed when it hits the ground. Uh, and we'll go ahead and solve that next. So horizontally, we know that it's moving at 25 meters per second. And this is going to be constant because there's no acceleration horizontally. Uh, vertically, we're going to have to calculate the uh, vertical velocity right before it hits the ground. And to do that, we're going to use v final equals v initial plus at and we're analyzing the vertical vertical motion um, so the final velocity vertical is equal to initial here is zero um, because we launched it horizontally plus 10 times the time and the time previously we calculated was 0.64 seconds so the final velocity here is going to be 6.4 meters per second i'm going to go ahead and bracket that so this is 6.4 meters per second. And then next, we're using the tip to tail method to add the vectors. So here's my 25 meters per second. And then here's my 6.4 meters per second. And what I'm looking for is this vector, the resultant. Um, what's the um, total speed of this, which we're going to have to figure out by using Pythagorean theorem. So using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We have 25 squared plus 6.4 squared equals c squared. 25 squared plus 6.4 squared, I get 665 
0.96 equals c squared. Square root that, and we get 25.8 meters per second. And that is our final speed. So that's the final speed right before it hits the ground.